Greetings. I'm David Fredericks from the Fred Hutch and the University of Washington in Seattle. It's my pleasure to give a brief lecture on the vaginal microbiome and the common condition bacterial vaginosis. Here are my disclosures. This talk is being funded by Illumina. The human vaginal microbiota is distinct among primates and is marked by low bacterial diversity. For example, in this study from 2014, they compared the bacterial diversity in 10 groups of primates. Humans had the lowest diversity or fewest bacterial species present compared to, for instance, our closest evolutionary relative, the chimpanzee, that had threefold higher diversity than humans. This fact makes us outliers in the animal kingdom. Each human body site tends to have a different microbiota with, for instance, the vaginal microbiota having much lower diversity compared to the microbiota on the skin, in the mouth, or in the colon. And with domination by the Firmicutes phylum, which is mostly consisting of lactobacillus species, including lactobacillus crispatus, inners, gensenii, gasseri, as well as vaginalis. This begs the question, why are lactobacilli so dominant in the vagina? One reason may be that humans feed lactobacilli by providing them with glycogen as a carbon and energy source. The vaginal epithelium is rich in glycogen as demonstrated by this PAS stain in pink of a vaginal biopsy. This carbohydrate polymer is shed into the vaginal lumen where it's hydrolyzed to monosaccharides such as glucose by human alpha amylase enzymes. This glucose is then converted into lactic acid by lactobacilli. This reduces the pH of the vagina, but the lactic acid has antimicrobial properties that tend to exclude other bacteria from this niche, leading to this low diversity state. In women who develop BV, there's a shift from this lactobacillus dominant microbiota on the left to a more diverse microbiota with decreased abundance of lactobacilli and the presence of numerous anaerobic and facultative bacteria, including Gardnerella species, Adipobium, Megasphera, Stethia, multiple Prevotellas, as well as some uncultivated bacteria, such as the bacterium we've designated BV-associated bacterium 1 or BVAB1. We don't really understand why there's this shift in vaginal bacterial communities in women who develop BV. But we've used nucleic acid sequence-based methods in order to understand BV in several different ways, including through broad-range 16S ribosomal RNA gene PCR coupled with deep sequencing in order to provide a taxonomic view of what's happening in the human vagina, through cultivation of bacteria with sequencing of genomes to assess identity and functional potential based on conventional genomics, and then using metagenomic sequencing of whole vaginal fluid or microencapsulated bacteria with single cell sequencing. One approach to measure the taxonomic composition of the bacterial biota is to use broad range 16S ribosomal RNA PCR with NGS. Here I present results from two populations of women, uh, a group on the right of women from the STD clinic in Seattle, Washington, and on the left, a group of African and African-American women from Kenya and Alabama. Warm colors denote the relative abundance of lactobacilli, showing that in women without BV, in this green strip here and here, they have high abundance of lactobacilli, including lactobacillus inners in orange, lactobacillus crispatus in red, and lactobacillus gensenii in yellow. In contrast, women with bacterial vaginosis have much more diverse vaginal bacterial species, decreased abundance of lactobacilli, and the presence of numerous bacteria, including Prevotella, BVAB1, Snethia, Gardnerella, Megasphera, uh, et cetera. And among these are this fastidious bacterium, BV-associated bacterium 1. We analyzed the associations between the relative abundances of these bacteria and the clinical findings used to diagnose BV in the clinic. Some bacteria, such as BVAB1, shown here, were associated with malodor, whereas other bacteria, such as Megasphera lornae, were associated with clue cells, 
which are shed vaginal epithelial cells coated with bacteria that are markers of bacterial vaginosis. Let's focus for a moment on one of these bacteria, Megasphera lornae. What is this bacterium? Well, using cultivation methods, we isolated several novel Megasphera species from the human vagina. We sequenced the 16S gene, and here we see a multiple sequence alignment of these different clusters of Megasphera bacteria, demonstrating the difference between Megasphera lornae, shown here, Megasphera hutchinsoni, and Megasphera vaginalis. But to prove that these bacteria were distinct species, we performed whole genome sequencing on these isolates and then compared their genomes using average nucleotide identity. Here are the three different Megasphera species with scanning electron micrographs showing their different morphology. And Megasphera lornae species, the two isolates are 99% similar to each other based on ANI. Same thing with Megasphera Hutchinsoni, 99% similar to each other, but less than 90% similar to other Megasphera species in the genus, showing that these Megasphera species from the human vagina are distinct and leading to the naming of these novel species. Another exciting approach for characterizing the genomic diversity found among bacteria in the human microbiome is the use of single cell sequencing technologies. Here we partnered with BitBiome to sequence bacterial genomes from vaginal fluid after encapsulation in microscopic hydrogel capsules using the workflow described here. So we start off by making tens of thousands of hydrogel capsules which are generated using microfluidics. Second, within the hydrogel capsules, cell lysis and DNA amplification is performed. Then the capsules are amplified using whole genome amplification and then sorted using flow cytometry. Lastly, DNA libraries are prepared and hundreds of microbial genomes are sequenced at once using NGS. We uh, initially looked at four samples from the human vagina. And in two of these four samples, we got good nucleic acid amplification of the bacterial genomes within these hydrogel capsules. And these are the two samples that we will analyze in the further slides. We used short read sequencing on the NextSeq 2000 to generate 150 base paired paradan reads and then produced 300,000 reads per well. These genomes then underwent de novo assembly in order to obtain single amplified genomes. Single cell sequencing data can be used to characterize the organi organisms present based on which genetic elements are found in common across multiple cells. Here, each row represents a single cell amplification sequencing library. Each column is a protein coding gene randomly subsampled to show 5,000 distinct protein coding genes at 90% amino acid identity and clustered by average linkage using, using the HSN distance. The value in each cell is the relative abundance of each gene in each specimen. The color bar across the top indicates the gene groups, which are the same as the groupings being used in subsequent slides. And here in this Tisney projection on the right, we can see the sets of genes in the heat map. And genes from several key vaginal species are denoted, including those from peptinophilus, shown here in red, Miggy Ibacillus indolicus, shown here in light blue, three different gene clusters from Lactobacillus inners, multiple gene clusters from Gardnerella species, and two different gene clusters from Prevotella. By performing taxonomic assignment of individual genes within each group, we can identify the types of organisms detected, which then inform the Tisney plot. For example, here we see a group of 1,032 genes which we can track back to Lactobacillus inners. And we can find the genes represented in the sequence libraries above. But there was another group of genes that also tracked with Lactobacillus inners, a group of 464 genes, which again, we can find present in our sequencing libraries. Prevotella species represented uh, 366 and 545 genes uh, in this uh, cluster. And again, you can see the representation of these Prevotella uh, uh, gene clusters within our single cell sequencing libraries. 
Interestingly, you can see a diverse collection of genes that are associated with Gardnerella species. Uh, and I will delve into that further in this next slide. This figure displays the alignment of protein-coded genes to a set of 122 Gardnerella genomes. The table on the right displays a set of 2,487 genes, which are all more than 200 amino acids in length and aligned to a given genome at 90% identity and with 90% coverage. What this displays is the diversity of genes within the Gardnerella genome. Here, for instance, we can find genes that are associated with the Gardnerella vaginalis uh, genome group. This cluster of genes in red corresponds to genes present in the Gardnerella peyotii group. This cluster of genes corresponds to genes in the Gardnerella Skudzinskii group, and this cluster of genes is unique to the Gardnerella leopoldii group. This allows us to think about how diversity in these genomes, in our samples, may inform the physiological function of these bacteria. In conclusion, the human vagina has low bacterial diversity compared to other body sites and is distinct among primates as having low diversity, except in the condition bacterial vaginosis, which is a more high diversity state and is more similar to the vaginal microbiota of other primates. BV has a heterogeneous microbiology. Several bacteria are difficult to cultivate in the lab, but are amenable to sequence-based characterization. Consensus sequence 16S ribosomal RNA gene PCR with next generation sequencing has provided an extremely useful list of bacteria, and many of these bacteria have been targeted for in-depth characterization. Finally, single cell genomics is an extremely promising approach for understanding the genetic potential of bacteria without cultivation and the genetic heterogeneity of bacteria that are present in any given microbiome. I want to recognize the numerous scientists that have contributed to this work, including the scientists in my lab at the Fred Hutch, listed here, our collaborators at BitBiome, listed here, and in particular, I want to call out Sam Mina that helped with the single cell analysis at the Fred Hutch. Thanks for listening. I appreciate your attention. <music>